Positive rotation. Welcome to Roll Call, a 126th Air Refueling Wing podcast at the Illinois Air National Guard at Scott Air Force Base. I'm your host, Master Sergeant Brian Ellison. The Roll Call podcast focused on people, mission, and community. Coming up on the podcast, our guest is the Scott Air Force Base Air Show and STEM Expo Director, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Wallace. He tells us all about the air show, what we can expect, the best way to enjoy it, and how do we get there and get into the show. So many questions answered. We uh, also have, I hate to say it, but a little con- a little controversy on the show. It, it involves a popular food served at fairs. We'll, we'll talk about it. There are parking passes for the air show that are available. They're they're dwindling, though, uh, one parking pass per car. But the best way, the best way, I think, it's stress, it's almost stress-free. It's at least, it's less stressful, is to take the Metrolink to the Shiloh Scott Station and, or, well, or, because you can't do both, the uh, Southwestern Illinois Community College Station, or as the kids call it, SWIC. They will have 10 shuttles running every 15 minutes from both locations. But uh, if you're, you're feeling plucky, you can still uh, drive there. Like I said, our free parking pass is available. If you're feeling old-fashioned, you can walk from the uh, station uh, to, the, uh, to, to the show. There will be uh, signs pointing you in that way. You can find a bunch more information on the Scott Air Force Base website about the air show. I'll put the link in the description. Registration is open now for kids on the on, for kids on guard 2023. This is uh, for 126th Air Refueling Wing members. It's coming this summer, the 28th of June. Kids of the 126th will be able to experience an age-friendly adaptation of the military, and registration is, like I said, now open. I'll have a link in the description. Coming up in this week's Look Around the Air Force, Secretary of the Air Force stops by recruiting command and submissions are open for the latest innovation rodeo in which today's guest, Lieutenant Colonel Wallace, makes a small cameo. Force Base Air Show and STEM Expo is coming up May 13th and 14th. Joining me now, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Wallace, the Air Show Director. Sir, thanks for coming in. Are you like full-blooded Scottish with that name? Yeah, yeah. So our roots go way back, like centuries ago. So <laughs> before the revolution, our family was over oh, here. Crazy. Yeah, mine too. But you know, we're uh, Irish, English, and Scottish. I always joke we hate ourselves. <laughs> Uh, sir, what are some of the aircraft that we can see at the the air show? Oh, so the team has been warned. Every MAF, every mobility gray tail will be out on that ramp. That is, that is the focus. We're the showcase wing. We're going to showcase AMC's assets. And, hey, we're going to C5, KC-135, KC-10, even the KC-46, and, of course, my favorite, the best of them all, the J-Model Herc. Okay? All right, the so. C-130. You got it. What can we expect from uh, those demonstrations from those uh, AMC planes? Yeah, so the the key here is like, you know, we're going after recruiting and also giving it back to the community as far as like, you know, this is our thank you, right? Right. So the focus is going to be also the C-17 demo team is going to be out there, you know, displaying like, hey, a lot of people haven't seen an aircraft that large do that cool stuff, right? So we're also doing some nine-line demos. We're having Air Force TAC-P, so not necessarily gray tails, but you know, Air Force members, you know, calling in a strike from, let's say, an AH-64 Apache, which would be kind of cool. Holy cow. Right? And then also, like, what's going on with the statics? Displaying, you know, some of AMC's capabilities, uh, aeromedical evacuation, for example. We're going to have flight nurses embedded on those aircraft, you know, demoing, you know, their capabilities. So, a lot going on. 
So a C-17, what do they do? Do they do loop-de-loops in the air? No, 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 no. You're not going inverted or anything. But when you see a plane that large, you know, wrap it up and go, you know, high bank angles and, you know, that thing's pretty cool. And even slow flight for, you know, aircraft that large right. is, is a sight to behold. So That is uh, cool. These are, uh, this is a two-day event. Will both days be the same? Will there be different demonstrations? As far as demos go, the both days will be exactly the same. There's some other um, stuff going in with the, the schedule, such as enlistments, re-enlistment, that might change up from day to day. But uh, all aerial acts will be the same. Fantastic. And not only is it an air show, but it is also a uh, STEM expo. How are you incorporating STEM uh, into the air show? Uh, so, yeah, this, this is near and dear to me. This is what I love about this, right? You know, this is probably the worst thing to say for an air show director, but, uh, you know, we haven't been really flying planes that much differently over the last 70 years, right? right. The jet engine has not evolved, right? So we're trying to say, like, what is next, right? What, sure. What's going to get kids excited? What's going to get them, you know, from binge watching Netflix and like get them into these STEM fields. Right. Right. So Boeing's being awesome. They're bringing out some of their new drones. Okay. And then also we have uh, the, uh, what is it? The Southwestern Illinois college uh, precision manufacturing. They're coming out with their CNC mills. For those of you who don't know what that is, like a computer numerically controlled mills, essentially you put a block of aluminum in it. You can spit out whatever you want. So we're demoing some subtractive manufacturing out there. Oh, wow. You also have your local innovation lab. Elevate's going to yeah. be out there doing uh, some uh, additive manufacturing demonstrations with some 3D printing and also demoing some of their uh, 3D scanning capabilities. And uh, really, it's, it's, you know, you name it, it's going to be out there. Um, a lot lined up. Uh, sir, how can uh, folks get uh, parking passes to get on to base? And if there's any left? Yeah, so if you go to the Scott Air Force Base website, you'll be able to catch a link directly over the air show. And from there, you'll be able to snag parking passes. We want to say, be very explicit. We're not selling tickets. You just need a parking pass to get onto the installation. Now, once those are gone, they're gone. But there's still other ways to get onto the base. So what we're really trying to push is the utilization of the metro. So we're going to have shuttles running from the metro stop here at Scott that are going to take you right to the front entrance of the air show. So if you don't want to walk very far, take the metro. It'll be Gucci, I promise. Talk about the metro, and I know that that gate, that's going to be an uh, open gate. There, You don't need a, uh, an ID card to get on base. Correct, yep. During so, that time. Yep, so the base is going to be open. So we're already coordinating for that. You will be vetted as you go through the entry control point to the air show. So expect a full security checkpoint. Uh, sir, you mentioned uh, all the statics, dis- all the static display in the planes that are going to be there. You talked about a lot of the AMC planes, but I'm sure there's uh, fighter planes as well. Absolutely. So we're going to have fighter row. So you'll have all your AMC assets, and then right across from them, you'll have things like the E18, uh, the Growler, uh, A10s on the docket for right now as well, which is kind of cool. The other thing is we also have you know warbirds out there. So we're going to have the TBM Avenger. Um, you'll also have a T28, some trainers. Uh, we have a B-25 Mitchell bomber that'll be coming in. So, and my favorite, and I'll throw this one out there, you, if you really want to go old school, is the Curtis Jenny. So we have the KC-46 out there, which sure. is, you know, that's the latest and greatest from AMC. But, right. you know, you know Scott's first aircraft that was assigned here was the Curtis JN-1 Jenny, or JN-4 Jenny. You know, we're going back from 1917 all the way up to, you know, 2023. It'll, it'll be the entire span of Scott's existence. Was that a biplane? It was a biplane. It's a, it's a cool airplane, very delicate airplane, but still a lot of history and, you know, very near and dear to, you know, the Scott um, historical perspective as well. Is that, does it fly? It does fly. We're not paying for it to fly, but we're going to put that thing on the ground. It's, as of right now, it's going to be the first thing you see when you come through the gates. Oh, that's awesome. So you talk about the, where are, are these planes going to be set up? Are they going to be on the ramp, on the runway? Yeah, so essentially the entire west side of the ramp. So um, we're eating up all of that real estate over there. So we'll have some uh, maps published uh, through public affairs and tagged to the website. There'll be QR codes available that you'll be able to take a snapshot of your phone and that'll have, you know, the latest layout. So I just want to remind people that air shows, especially when it comes to static aircraft, they're highly dynamic environments because, you know, planes never break and crews are never late. And, you know, everything just was going to be executed perfectly. So Things are going to get shuffled around. Just be patient with us. We'll get the information out as it changes. But uh, essentially, it'll be the north side of the ramp will be all the fighters. Um, then you'll have all the mobility aircraft in the middle. And then the south side of the ramp, you'll have um, all your warbirds, your vintage stuff. And then also some helos scattered in there as well. Wow, this is going to be a great air show. I can't wait. This is going to be fun. What activities will there be for kids? 
Um, well, through the generous donations of our sponsors, uh, we have an awesome kid zone set up that'll be in the grass on the infield there. So there'll be plenty of, uh, you know, bouncy type acti activities, kids running around. Also, the statics are going to be huge. Um, you know, be able to pet a jet and just run through and get a get a tour is there. The STEM Expo, a lot of that stuff is going to be um, geared towards the younger crowd. So that's the 8, 10, and under uh, type demographic, cool. right? So, And you're also going to have stuff on the ground. So we have World War II, some reenactors coming out that are going to be dressed in, um, you know, the era attire, you know, having some Willie's Jeeps and stuff running oh, uh, as cool. well. Yeah, so there'll, there'll be plenty to do. And, now, of course, you can always eat, too. If you, if, or you just start eating, just <laughs> like a true American just, yeah, plow into some corn dogs. Speaking of corn dogs, what do you prefer on your corn dog? Uh, a hot dog or not a hot dog? Uh, ketchup or mustard? Oh, I'm, I'm a purist. It has to be mustard. Mustard? That's not a purist? No. What? what? We you... have controversy on No, the, this, on is, the this is not a controversy. This, this is, is controversy. Oh, my Boy, goodness. Boy, oh, goodness. What are you, me. Ketchup-eating corn dog people in communist <laughs> Russia, maybe. I mean, come on. <laughs> I saw on the, the flyer uh, something about Torah, Torah, Torah. Is, are you showing the movie? No, no, no. They have a full up act. So you're talking Mitsubishi Zeros and some other dive bombers out there, you know, recreating the attack on Pearl Harbor. So uh, dropping some uh, dropping some money on some pyro. So the things are going to be blowing up. I didn't know this, but apparently they just go out there with giant bags full of unleaded gasoline and they just blow it up. So I mean, why would you not love this? They're recreating Pearl Harbor. Yeah, they're going to recreate the attack of on Pearl Harbor. Yes. The Japanese bombing Pearl Harbor. With a full narration. They're going to go through. They're going to talk you through. They kick off the show. It's like, you know, they're going to talk about how the radar site mistook them for a, a flight of returning bombers. And they, like, let, pretty much let them on through. And, yeah, they're, it's, it's the whole deal all the way to the conclusion. There's more to that, to that story than, than just Pearl Harbor being attacked. Yeah, the true story is what happened afterwards, right? Right. And how the country came together, responded. I mean, we went through this ourselves in our own lifetimes after 9-11 and, that, that's, that's the true takeaway. It's like, how did, how did we get better? How did we move on? What do you hope visitors to the air show take away from uh, visiting Scott Air Force Base? So I mentioned two things. So, yes, we are out to recruit. Let's be honest. The numbers are terrible right now with recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, we've we've got to get them up. We have to inspire service, right? So in my mind, that's, that's rule number one. If we, if we inspire one kid out there to join our ranks, then we're good to go. However, the secondary is also, we are giving essentially, we're writing a love letter back to the community. Like this is what we're giving back. And we don't like to talk about taxpayers, but we talk about, you know, the, the family that is the Scott Air Force Base area, right? Right. So this is our gift back to you. This is our way of saying thank you for all of the years of support and putting up with us. So. <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking with uh, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Wallace, the air show director that's going to be on Scott Air Force Base at uh, Scott Air Force Base. And STEM show, it's coming May 13th and 14th. What time, uh, what's the uh, hours of uh, operation, if you will? All right, rule number one of doing air shows, you never publish hours. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time so, are you hoping to start? So, How yep, about that? so I'll give you the gates. So we're going to open at 9 a.m. Okay, there we and, go. And the gates are going to close about 5 p.m., all right? Okay. So, but once the show's over, we'll start flushing people out. So saying, go on and get. Uh, so, but really what we're shooting for is 1130 is to start. That's okay. weather dependent, right. right? And wrapping things up around 4 p.m. Okay. Now, I can tell you that normally with air shows, Blue Angels, like our, our headliner is going gonna, gonna to be the last act of the day. However, we don't like advertising that because if weather changes and we have to roll them up to the beginning, we don't want people to be, you know, upset that they showed up at 1 p.m. and they missed the blues. So my recommendation to you, be there at 11 o'clock at the latest and you'll see everything that you want to see. There you go. Uh, sir, do you have any insider tips or recommendations for attendees uh, to make the most of their experience at the air show? Absolutely. Hey, so first off, read the signage, please. Whatever you do, there's going to be a lot of signs as you're walking in saying, hey, these are the prohibited items. Uh, if you have those on your, on your person, you're going to be turned around. So you don't want to be walking a mile back to your car, right? So right. Uh, there's no shuttle service from the parking lots uh, to the actual entry control point. So if you don't want to walk, okay. we advise you take the metro. Um, that way you'll be able to jump on a bus and you'll get sped out right there at the doorstep of the entry control point. Also, sunscreen. Hey, it's going to be hot out there. Hopefully it's going to be nice and sunny bluebird day. Uh, May, you're rolling the dice. We, we firmly get that. So uh, uh, bring your sunscreen, bring plenty of water. And of course, if you're sensitive to loud noises, bring plenty of hearing protection, earplugs, earmuffs, whatever you need to do uh, to mitigate that. I have little ones. Uh, they, they can't stand it when it gets super loud. So um, just... 
keep that in mind and uh, come prepared. So how has the community come around this? How, how have they uh, partnered with uh, Scott Air Force Base? You, you don't have an air show without the support of the community. That just plain and simple. You People don't realize like how big of a lift this is until you start planning on yourself. I know I was taken aback just by a, the sheer amount of coordination. So, I mean, from the buses to the metro service to the you know state police and other law enforcement agencies, working with the hospitals, you know, carving out landing zones for helicopters. I mean, it, it's just astounding like how much support you need and off, often at no cost. So, um, I just want to say you know thanks for everybody who's been putting up with us. I know I keep using that term, but it has been a huge lift, and it has tried patience across the board, but uh, the, the show is going to be awesome, and it's all going to be worth it. So thanks to everyone who made it happen. Is this your – have you have you done air shows before? Have you coordinated air shows before? I have. So <laughs> my air show experience stemmed from working booster club booths and uh, being a static air crew um, exhibitor, so just essentially a pilot just standing next to an airplane. So I went from that to director. So boss is like, good luck. You know, don't screw it up. We're all counting on you. What could go wrong? But uh, how long? How long does it take to plan something like this air show? So this starts two years out. Um, really starts with public affairs. So two years from the air show, you have to put in a request to get the Blue Angels or the Thunderbirds or some of these other teams. So it, it's a it's a huge lead time. And then from that, it's just you know locking down acts. You're you're looking at nine to twelve months out, and a ton of coordination. So so before you were air show director, what did you do? What'd you do before this? Were you brought on just to be the air show director or were you uh, a pilot someplace uh, um, uh, in the, in AMC and oh, yeah. <laughs> or in 375th? I don't have to, we, we don't have to answer that question. Oh yeah. For a long time I, I was wearing three hats. So I was C21 pilot, even though if you ask all the other C21 pilots, they're like, yeah, we, that guy, we don't, who, who is that guy? Right. Who's Wally? Right. <laughs> that guy never flies. But then uh, the other job was chief innovation officer. So that oh, was, right, yeah. if you're familiar with elevate mm-hmm. Scott air force bases, spark cell, the innovation cell, I was the chief over there, but uh, really it was line of sight. I think I was just um, walking by uh, the current operations group commander of Air Force to do an open house 101 training. So the Air Force calls them open houses, not really air shows. So okay. it's a, we call it air show and um, STEM expo. Some people call them open house and STEM expo. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but ICAS offers a lot of valuable training. There's a manual, of course, there's an AFI for that, just like everything else. The 10-1004, here's how to do an air show. And really, it's just, you know, looking at what other people have done. Uh, good thing is there's good continuity, you know, stored digitally. So we're able to go back and read that lessons learned document from the last two decades and just look at all the other products that, you know, our predecessors had put together for us. What, have, uh, what are you looking forward to uh, as far for this air show? May 15th. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Besides it being over, sir. <laughs> no, so. What, yeah. <laughs> no, so. Yeah. Okay. To answer that question, uh, what I keep trying to tell everybody is that, and what I'm looking forward to the most to answer your question, is May 13th when we open the gates and those first set of kids start crawling around the aircraft and smiling and interacting with the STEM exhibits and telling their parents how awesome this is, and you see their faces light up when we start launching jets out there. That's that's what I'm looking for. So COVID's kind of messed things up. How often uh, do you hope to uh, have these air shows? Oh, yeah, COVID messed a lot of stuff up. That 2020 show, I feel for that team because their show was canceled a couple months out. Oh, man. So you can imagine all that work. Just, oh. um, Yep, so normally they're every two years. Okay. Uh, so this one, usually what we do is uh, they're in, out of sync with Spirit of St. Louis. So usually Spirit of St. Louis across the river does their show one year, and then Scott Air Force Base brings everything you know sure. on the east side the next year, and they oh, go cool. back and forth. So. Whether or not that that will happen, but I know Spirit of St. Louis is on on the books to do theirs next year as well. They got picked up by the Blue Angels. Yeah, I mean Spirit of St. Louis is great, but come to our show; it's going to be way better. Sir, anything else to add? Yeah, just uh, you know, a big thank you to the team uh, and really Scott Air Force Base and the community for you know even making this thing possible. I, I keep reiterating that it is a huge, 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 huge lift, and it is a it's a giant ask of everybody. Um, secondly, Mother's Day weekend, right? Why would you not want to bring mom out to an air show? Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool opportunity. Hey, it's free. Bring her out, you know, show Tora, Tora, Tora. The Red Bull team's going to be out there. Blue Angels and a lot of cool high-performance demos. And, and just to reiterate, um, just to manage expectations, once those parking passes are gone, please start utilizing the Metro. Metro, Metro, Metro. We have parking reserved over at Swick over in Belleville, so you can catch it there. And even if you want to go further, uh, Swansea or wherever, just uh, bring it in. We'll have the shuttles running. It'll drop you off right at the doorstep. 
Fantastic. That is Lieutenant Colonel Adam Wallace, the air show director for the Scott Air Force Base Air Show and STEM Expo, which is coming up May 13th and 14th. Can't wait to see you there, sir. Look forward to it. The Air Force has published the Global Futures Report, assessing four potential operating environments airmen may have to navigate by 2040. Alternative futures include great power competitors continuing attempts to increase leverage over the U.S. while diminishing American advantages, the possibility of technological advances reshaping global power dynamics, coordination between Russia and China for their own benefit, and natural and man-made crises that could drive isolationist and nationalist tendencies across the globe. Planners and strategists will use the report for future war game scenarios to help airmen anticipate what future operations may be like. Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall visited Recruiting Service Headquarters in San Antonio, Texas for updates on efforts to sign new people up for an Air Force career. The trip comes at a time when concerns are focused on the service's ability to attract and recruit airmen to meet the nation's security needs. Major General Ed Thomas, Air Force Recruiting Service Commander, says they're knocking down unnecessary policy barriers to help bring in the best talent. That includes revitalizing the naturalization program with U.S. citizenship and immigration services, funding college loan repayment programs, and adapting tattoo policies. Other new programs reward existing education and technical credits. Members of the installation and mission support community can win up to $1 million to put their ideas into practice. The 2023 Innovation Rodeo is looking for new concepts that will help the Air Force deliver capabilities, improve installations, or support airmen, guardians, and families in a better way. This year's theme is mission-focused innovation. Both military and civilians can apply. All submissions are due by May 12th. That's your look around the Air Force. I'm Technical Sergeant Brett Crowley. Thanks again to Lieutenant Colonel Adam Wallace, the director of the Scott Air Force Base Air Show and STEM Expo. Again, just a reminder for the Air Show, they are encouraging folks to use the Metrolink. Is that what it's still called, the Metrolink? I believe so. Uh, for the Air Show, uh, that drops you off at base, and a shuttle bus will be along to get you to the show. So again, take the uh, Metrolink to Scott Air Force Base at the uh, Shiloh Scott Air Force Base uh, Station, or you can go to uh, SWIC, the station there, and there'll be a shuttle bus to pick you up and take you right to the show. Or you can uh, walk from the station. There'll be signs pointing you in the right direction. Suicide has no single cause and no single preventative action treatment or cure will eliminate every individual suicide death. But research shows we need to reframe our thoughts and understanding of suicide from isolated outcomes to an integrated primary prevention approach that focuses on root causes. So again, just not one thing. We, uh, we can't point to that one thing and say, well, this happened yesterday, so this is why they did that. Veterans service members and their families can reach the National Suicide Prevention Hotline by dialing 988 and pressing 1 to be, con to be connected to the Veterans Crisis Line. You can find all of our links on Linktree, linktr.ee forward slash 126ARW. If you're watching on YouTube, you can also download this on your favorite podcast app. If you'd like to pass along some information about your uh, group, your, your squadron, your flight, you want to let us know what's going on, email rollcall at 126rollcall at gmail.com. Thanks for listening to Roll Call, a 126th Air Refueling Wing podcast focused on people, mission, and community. I'm Master Sergeant Brian Ellison. 500 stable. Yeah.